Every day, I get a lot of car related messages on Instagram. Some people ask for help, some people ask for advice, and a lot of them are very interesting. One particular message from a chap called Thomas recently really caught my eye. He asked, Hello Taylor, it's a long shot, but I don't know if there's a better person to ask this. I recently won a car on auction in the UK that I'd like to drive back to Europe. I know that I have to notify the DVLA by sending the relevant V5C page filled out to them, but I'm kind of shot with the road tax and insurance part. Do you know any insurers who would insure foreigners only for a few days? Cheers, Thomas. So I messaged Thomas back saying, hi Thomas, I don't, I'm afraid, it's really difficult to get temporary insurance in the UK. What car is it and where are you taking it? He replied, it's a V12 Toyota Century and I'm taking it to Switzerland. I then messaged Thomas back and said to him, if he's willing to pay all expenses, I will deliver the car to him for free. Okay, so we have arrived in Essex. We yep. have collected the Toyota Century and this car is enormous. <laughs> it's quite big. I, I didn't realise they were quite this enormous. It is very cool. Yeah. We can't go into too much detail because we are losing lives. Yeah. We also can't go into too much detail because it's not safe for, we have to cover those up. PG, there's, yeah. this lady <laughs> upon the bonnet does have her breasts exposed. <laughs> so we have to disguise this. But before we go anywhere, I want to have a look at the engine. Wow. It says V12 you on it. You can't see much of it. Not so really, no. This is a five litre. Five litre V12, quad um, cam. It's basically, correct me if I'm wrong, like two 1JZs glued together. In essence, I think, yeah. So this is this is pretty cool. Yeah. And fun fact, I learned this from Luke, Toyota designed this engine, designed and built this engine, yep. just for this car. Yep. So every single car, every single century they sold, they made a massive loss on it. Yeah. So this is a mega, mega interesting car. I'm going to start it. Wow. <laughs> oh. And look at these. Look at the little green marker lights on the wings. Oh, that's so cool. Right. So I'll pop the bonnet light. down. Yeah, so let's pop the bonnet light. We're losing light, so we're going to get this back to the unit, give it a quick check over, and then tomorrow, as long as it's not completely <laughs> we're going to drive it to Switzerland. Back to the unit? Yeah, I'm going in the back. Oh, you're going in the back, oh, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be I'm chauffeured. Gonna go, I'm going to go in the front. I'm going to, oh, look at that. Oh, you wait till you see this. Right, we are back at the unit with the Toyota Century and she drove like honey. Oh, she was It was beautiful. like gliding on a mist of... Smoothness. Smoothness. And, yeah, it was smooth as arse cheeks, really. It was as smooth as arse. It was. Come and have a look inside. Let's have a look at some of the features of this amazing piece of equipment. A symphony of cashmere in... What, what is it? Cashmere what? It's wool, isn't it? It's like special wool. There's a name for it and I can't blooming remember. Well, it's wool. All of the switches are in Japanese because obviously this is a Japanese import. They didn't make them for the UK market. So all Toyota Centuries are imports, aren't they? They are, yes. So what have we got? We've got electric steering column, four electric windows. I've got buttons here. So I can adjust the front <laughs> seat from here, which is just fantastic. Oh, who gave you control of that? Obviously, aircon, dual zone climate control. I believe it's got a different climate for the rear. Yep. It's got electric steering column. It's got auto headlights, which is good because it is only a, it's, you know, it's a 1997, isn't it? It so is, it's yes. very old. Or thereabouts. Uh, it's got an electric folding mirror. It's got curtains <laughs> fresh out of your nan's kitchen they really are doilies aren't they they are oh look at that we've got a mirror up here with a lamp so you can check your they are. eyeliner and your makeup yeah i'll just make sure that i'm aging terribly yeah yep. if you look on the door here it's got heated and massaging rear seats because this car was obviously built for its passengers not for the driver and Luke, if you fold down your centre armrest... I shall just bring this down here. Obviously made of cash. So this looks like a normal armrest where you would rest an arm. However, if I pull this... <laughs> oh, and slide it look back, at the what, phone! What I have got is the largest collection of rear buttons I've ever seen in a car. So there's a Motorola phone. There so is. You can phone how how does one... Oh! That's nice. Hello. <laughs> no, it's... Konnichiwa. Oh yes, Konnichiwa. Do you know what? It, it is a bit like being in like your nan's cottage, as it you said is, earlier. Yeah. It's just cozy and nice. It is cozy, nice, and we have curtains. Mm. It so, makes me want to fall asleep having just consumed my body weight in Yorkshire pudding. <laughs> 
So this exact car from new was Ooh. shipped to the UK very early in its life. Yeah. And it belonged to the Japanese embassy, the Japanese embassy in the UK. So the Japanese prime minister will have been chauffeured around in this exact car. Mm. The, the cool thing as well is that when this was serviced, this wasn't serviced at a Toyota dealership for the first 20 years or so of its life. No. It was serviced at Toyota's UK technical center because it was a Japanese embassy car. Yeah. Which I find really cool. That is really, really cool. But moving on to my favorite feature of all, come around the front and have a look at this. We have a horn. A very nice horn. Sounds like something out of Grand Theft Auto. But not only that, there is a switch down here that allows you to engage the horn all of the time, which is an absolute fantastic idea, especially if you're a passenger that wants to annoy his driver and embarrass him. It has literally just had an MOT, so it should be absolutely spot on. We're going to quickly check the levels. We're going to check the tire pressures, make sure it's all sound. And then tomorrow we're going to drive it to Switzerland and deliver it to its new owner, Thomas, who is very, very excited to receive this car. So, shall we check the levels, sir? I say we check the levels, sir. Let's check the levels, sir. I've checked the tires, the treads are good. They're not perished beyond recognition. Also, fun fact about this car, it has air suspension all around. Yes. So it's self-leveling, softy, wafty air suspension. And did you mention the, um, the, the actual basis of the seats? Earlier. Oh, I didn't. Oh, the chair is on a pneumatic spring. Go on, give her CPR. Go on, girl, breathe! Shall we finish off checking our bits and then tomorrow we'll hit the road? Yeah. Yeah? Sounds like a plan. Let's do that. While Taylor and Luke check their bits off camera, a reminder from me that if you, yes, you want to buy yourself a used car, van or motorbike, run a car vertical report on it first to ensure it's not been crashed, stolen or clocked. To give you guys an idea of what a good car vertical report looks like, I have run the numbers on Big P. And as you can see, we've got green ticks for odometer, finance and damage that tells me and you that this car does not have a shady past. Yes. But had I wanted to buy this VW Touareg, I would have known because of car vertical that we've got an amber warning for odometer and damage. So we need to scroll down, have a little bit of a look. The pictures seem to be in order. So I reckon that this has been crash repaired. Yeah, the car looks to be in very nice condition. Scroll down, however, and we can see here that we have got one hell of a rollback. We can show more and we can see that in 2020, that Tuareg had 76,000 miles and one year later, 26,000 miles. So that's been rolled back quite badly. Keep on scrolling down and we can see that it was also category S repairable, which we might not have known had we not run a car vertical report. So do your due diligence. So again, do not get stung when buying a used car, van or motorbike. Run a car vertical report. What's more, you will get 20% off using the code. You know it already. V2! Right, so it's the morning after the night before and we are floating our way to Dover in yep. the Toyota Century. So far, your thoughts, Luke? Do you know what? Driving this is very special. It is, isn't it? It I'm, really is. We're sitting here on a cloud of loveliness. You feel really high up in this car, don't you? You do. You it do. almost feels SUV-like. Fingers crossed, we get no issues. I don't think we will because it's Toyota. Yeah, they built these well. And they're, they're known for their fantastic reliability. So I don't touch wood. I don't think we're going to get any reliability issues. An hour or so later, we arrived in Dover. Born in the USA. Everyone got their passport. <laughs> <laughs> that what you that was. so that, tired. What that is, is a photo taken before midday. What you look like. <laughs> Well, you look like someone's going right out of bed, T-shirt on, <laughs> stand there. <laughs> oh, look how choppy it is. Oh. Oh. oh, oh, good Lord, that's white. That's not good. Not so good indeed. But despite the conditions, we made it safely across the channel and arrived in France.
So, you join us at the moment, traveling through the lovely French countryside. We have been on the road for about two hours since Calais. Yeah, and I feel like I've done about 20 minutes. Yeah, so we are an hour and a half away from a lake that I still can't pronounce. I think it's Lac du Der Chancoc. Okay. Which is um, somewhere that I wanted to kind of just have a look at. Basically a lake, which they flooded three villages to make to stop Paris from flooding. So um, we're going to go. Very interesting. We're going to go and have a look at that. And you've planned this route, so I'm I'm just along for the ride. Yeah, you're you're doing so, what I tell you, which is rare. Yeah, yeah. So I'm just floating along, following your directions. Fantastic. So well, if it's shit, it's on you. Okay. Well, yeah. You'll join us in an hour and a half when we get there and um, see if Taylor's disappointed with how rubbish it is. Yeah. day one and we've made it over 250 miles and we are at the Lac du Der. The Lac du Der. Yes. Which, which is, go Yeah, on. well it's quite interesting because what they did to make this, I wanted to come and have a look at it because uh, the River Seine in Paris yep. flooded. So in the 70s, I believe, they actually made this by hand, just like the Allegro. So what they did is flooded three whole villages. They yeah. just flooded them so that Paris didn't flood anymore. Which so everyone here just got yeah. out. But we're doing very well so far. Yep. We've made it all this way. We've got another couple three, hundred miles. Three hours left to go. Yeah, three hours left to go until our night stop, which is in Mahoos. Yeah, so we're going to um, head to Mahoos. The Toyota Century is doing absolutely fabulously. Oh, she's beautiful to be a passenger in. Yeah, I've very much enjoyed this car so far. So shall we enjoy the scenery for a, for a moment and yeah. then hit the road? Sounds like a plan to me. Cool, let's do that. Bonjour, monsieur. You join us on day trois. 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 Oui. Oui, oui. We're in Mulhouse. Mulhouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah Millhouse. Millhouse. Yeah. It's in the south of France, of course. Lovely, lovely. And we are about to enter Switzerland. We are. We've just woken up. It's a beautiful French morning. And of course, we couldn't leave France without some French patisserie items. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Oh, we're about to head to Switzerland. We're about what? An hour away? Mm-hmm. So today should be a lovely, easy day without issue. Why have you said that? <laughs> So, Taylor, we are, as it stands, a mile and a half from the border Ooh, with Switzerland. That was quick. We've been driving like 20 minutes. I know. We weren't too far away. It was quite a convenient night stop. Yeah. Um, the only thing I'm a bit confused about is I've only driven in Switzerland once. Yeah. And you have to have a motorway vignette, like a little sticker. You might yeah. have seen them with the number underneath of what year it is. Now, last time we went to the border, we didn't, we didn't have them because we thought you could buy them at the border. And they waved us in and they took us to a place to buy one. But I don't know how it works if they don't wave us in because I think there's massive fines if you drive on the uh, motorway in Switzerland. Oh, one. really? Yeah. I don't know. Well, we'll have to buy one. We'll have to buy one. We'll have to ask someone. Yeah, yeah I've, at never the border. Actually, I've never driven in Switzerland. Have you never? No. It's quite nice. A few miles later, we managed to find somewhere to buy the sticker we needed. And after getting back on the road for a short stint, we arrived at the beautiful Lake Lucerne. So here we are, we've made it to Lake Lucerne in Switzerland. And I must admit, Luke, yeah. I've been to some beautiful places before. This is up there. I mean, genuinely, look at just that. Just look at it. But can we also appreciate while we're here that the Century has made it without issue? Mm. It's been absolutely spot on. And for a vehicle of this age and this mileage, because yeah. it's not no mileage, no. it has been an absolute joy. We've floated the whole way here in complete comfort. We've had all of our luxuries and yeah. amenities on board, and it has been brilliant. So it's been fantastic. Well done, Toyota Century. We're not too far away from Thomas's house now, so probably take us what another half an hour hour to get to i think it's about half an hour to zurich yep yeah. so and not I far think at all he is going to be absolutely over the moon with this car but in the meantime just take in some of this breathtaking scenery
Luke, I think I can see Thomas. I think I can see a very excited gentleman. <laughs> well done, Luke. High five. High five. Well done. Hello, Thomas. Hello. We've made it. How yeah, are you? I'm fine, thank you. Lovely to meet you. What nice do you to think meet you. of lovely your lovely you. Hello. century? Yeah, it's just amazing. I mean, I have no bird. <laughs> it's quite big, isn't Absolutely, it? Absolutely, yeah. But it's not that, that, that big, as I told, but yeah, it's huge. Were you expecting oh my God. this? No, I mean, I didn't really have any expectations. I was just stupidly exciting in the last few days. Because this for so, you was a complete impulse purchase, wasn't it? Yes, absolutely. So with a few friends, we are having a laugh, a few beers in a garage, yeah, yeah. and we bid on an, we bid on an auction, Yeah. and no one bid us. So. <laughs> So here it is. Yes, so there we all. are. <laughs> you then messaged us and we were like, do you know what? Let's deliver it. Yeah. Why not? So we've had a lovely drive down, Thomas, in the cashmere interior. Oh my. Um, there's a lot of everything works. There's a couple of little issues, uh, yeah. a little bit of a wheel wobble mm -hmm. about 130 kilometers an hour. Uh, the aircon works perfectly. It's super, super comfortable. It's, it is a joy. <laughs> this thing is absolutely awesome. You've definitely made oh. a good purchase here. I'm glad to hear that. I hope that you're I mean, pleased with it. Finally, I can see it in person because, yeah, I was eyeing these cars this century for years now. Yeah. And I would never imagine that I will one day own one. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was an impulse purchase. I wasn't prepared for it at all. Well, but I mean, my, my heart is just racing now. <laughs> <laughs> that's good, that's good. Well, hopefully it's a good impulse purchase. I think it is. I think it's awesome. How many of these are there in Switzerland, do you know? As far as I know, from the Wheel 12, there is only one. Wow. We will go for a few shows, yeah. Japanese car meets and everything. And uh, maybe I will visit the old country in it this once awesome. or twice, we will see. Well, Thomas, but... I hope you get some great enjoyment out of it, Thank which I'm you. sure you will. We've had a fantastic journey down. We've really, really enjoyed Glad it. We've that. done over a thousand kilometers and it has been an absolute joy. It's one car that I never expected to drive across Europe, that's for sure. No. A V12 <laughs> Toyota Century. I hope you all enjoyed this episode. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you've got a car that you've impulsively purchased and you live on the other side of Europe, but you know what? Give me a message on Instagram because you never know, we might be up for dropping it off for you. I'll see you next time.